Hi, this is lesson number 16 on probability, and in this lesson we study Bernoulli and binomial distributions. Let's start with Bernoulli distribution. A Bernoulli random variable is a random variable which has only two possible outcomes. Now consider a random variable x, which can only take two possible values, 1 or 0. Let's say it takes a value 1 with probability of p and it takes a value of 0 with probability of 1 minus p, where p is between 0 and 1. Okay, so this is a, a random variable and I can give you examples of such random variable. A coin toss, a single coin toss, when you, when you toss a coin, you either get heads or tails. Heads with probability of p or tails with probability of 1 minus p. Another example I can give you is when you take an exam, let's say a probability exam, you may pass with the probability of p or you may fail with the probability of 1 minus p. So you have a single trial which has only two possible outcomes. And such a random variable is called a Bernoulli random variable or a Bernoulli trial. Now let's find the expected value of this Bernoulli random variable x, the variance and the moment generating function of this random variable x. As you can see this random variable x is a discrete random variable because for instance x takes a value of 0 or 1 and the probability that x takes a value of little x is given by probability that x takes a value of 0 is 1 minus p. The probability that x takes a value of 1 is p. So since this is a discrete random variable which takes two possible values 0 and 1, its expectation is simply the sum, let's say little x starts from 0 to 1 of x times p of x of little x. And that is equal to 0 times the probability that x takes a value of 0 plus 1 times the probability that x takes a value of 1. And that is equal to 0 plus 1 times p, which is p. Therefore, the expected value of a Bernoulli random variable is equal to p, which is the probability that x takes a value of 1, or the probability of success. Let's say, if you pass an exam, that's a success. If you fail an exam, that's a failure. And the probability of passing is p, and the probability of failing is 1 minus p. Therefore, the probability of success is equal to the expected value of the random variable x. Let's find the variance of this random variable x. The variance of this random variable is equal to the expected value of x squared, which is the second moment, minus the expected value of x quantity squared. We know the expected value of x. Therefore, I can write this as the expected value of x squared minus p squared. Now let's find the expected value of x squared so that we can find the variance. But now the expected value of x squared is equal to the sum x from 0 to 1 of x squared times p of x of little x. And that is equal to 0 squared times the probability that x takes a value of 0 plus 1 squared times the probability that x takes a value of 1. That is 0 plus 1 squared is 1, 1 times p is p, so 0 plus p, which is p. So the expected value of x squared, or the second moment, of a Bernoulli random variable is again equal to the probability of success p. Therefore, the variance of a Bernoulli random variable x is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the mean expected value of x the whole square, and that is equal to p minus p squared. If I take out p to multiply 1 minus p, and that I have the variance. So the variance of a Bernoulli random variable is equal to the probability of success times the probability of failure. Okay, I think that's easy to remember. The probability of success times the probability of failure. Now let's find the MGF, the moment generating function of the random variable x. mx of t by definition is equal to the expected value of e to the power of t times x. 
Okay, x is a discrete random variable, so I can write this as the sum x from 0 to 1 because my support is 0 or 1, or x could only take values 0 and 1, times e to the power of t times little x times the probability of x of little x. Now this is equal to e to the power of t times 0 times the probability that x takes a value of 0 plus e times t to the power of 1 times the probability that x takes a value of 1. And that is equal to e to the power of 0 is 1 p of x of 0 plus e to the power of t times 1 is e to the power of t times the probability that x takes a value of 1. The probability that x takes a value of 0 is 1 minus p. And the probability that x takes a value of 1 is p. So I have 1 minus p plus e to the power of t times p. Or 1 minus p plus p times e to the t as the mgf mx of t of a Bernoulli random variable x. Now we have the expected value, the variance, and the MGF of a Bernoulli random variable. Let me give you an exercise here. For your exercise, try to find the expected value and the variance of this Bernoulli random variable x using the MGF. Okay, uh, that's all I have for a Bernoulli random variable, but let's go ahead and discuss what we mean by a binomial random variable. Binomial random variable. To explain what a binomial distribution is, I'm going to start with an example. Example. Toss a coin. Three times. Note that each trial, or each of the three trials that I have here, are independent of each other. Meaning, if I observe heads in my first coin toss, that outcome does not affect the probability of observing heads or tails in the next coin toss, or in the next trial. With that, I'm going to say that the probability of heads in each of the three trials is equal to p. Of course, if we have a fair coin, that p is equal to 1 half. What is the sample space of this experiment of tossing three coins? Heads on the first, heads on the second, heads on the third, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, and heads, heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, 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 heads, and t, t, t. Now, let, let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 possible outcomes in my sample space. Define the following random variable. Define the random variable x to be the number of heads or the number of successes in the three Bernoulli trials that I have. Bernoulli trials. I'm saying that because each coin toss is a Bernoulli random variable. And each of those Bernoulli trials are independent. Now, when I have such a random variable, I say this random variable x follows a binomial distribution with the number of trials n equal to 3 and the probability of success p. Let's see. Let's uh, examine each outcome of that experiment. So for the outcome, heads, heads, and heads, what is the probability that outcome happens? The probability of observing heads, heads, and heads is equal to the probability of heads on the first intersection heads on the second, intersection heads on the third. And each of these trials are independent. 
So the probability of observing heads on the first is P. And since that is independent of the second trial, I can multiply that by P and by P again. So the probability of observing heads in the three trials is P times P times P, which is P to the power of 3. So that probability is P to the power of 3. What is the value of X in this outcome? The value of X in this outcome is equal to 3, because X is the number of heads, and I have 3 heads. If I look into heads, heads, and tails, the probability that this event happens as p squared times 1 minus p. That is because the probability of observing heads in the first is p. The probability of observing heads in the second is p. So I have p times p, which is p squared. And the probability of observing tails in the third is 1 minus p. And the number of heads in this event is 2. Heads, heads, 2. Let me list all the other outcomes. Looking into heads, tails, and heads, that happens with probability of p squared times 1 minus p, because I have two heads and one tail, and the number of heads is 2. Looking at the event tails, heads, and heads, that happens with probability of p squared times 1 minus p, and I have two heads in that trial. Looking at the event HTT, that happens with probability of P times 1 minus P squared. And I have one head and that outcome. Looking at tails, heads, and tails, that happens with probability of P times 1 minus P squared. And the number of heads is 1. And TTH has one head. And that happens with probability of P times 1 minus P squared. And finally, TTT has probability of happening of 1 minus P to the power of 3, and I have 0 heads in that outcome. The outcomes are all listed here, and looking carefully, the, the probability that the random variable x takes a value of 3 is equal to P to the power of 3, and the probability that the random variable x takes a value of 2 as I have three outcomes in my sample space giving me a value of 2 for x and each of them happen with the same probability which is p squared times 1 minus p therefore this happens with a probability of 3 times p squared times 1 minus p the probability that x takes a value of 1 happens with a probability of 3 times, I have 3 events in my, out, in my sample space, giving me a value of 1 for x, and each happening with probability of p times 1 minus p square. So I have 3 times p times 1 minus p square as the probability that x takes a value of 1, and the probability that x takes a value of 0 is equal to 1 minus p times 1 minus p times 1 minus p, which is 1 minus p to the power of 3. I can rewrite these probabilities as, now, I have three heads here. So what I'm doing is, I am choosing 3 from 3. So that is 3 choose 3 times p to the power of 3 times 1 minus p to the power of minus 3. Okay, let's look at this carefully. Choose 3 of the 3 to give you heads and 0, this is 0, 0 of the 3 to be tails. And the number of ways you can do that is 3 combination 3. Remember n combination x or n combination k is equal to n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. And here I am choosing two of the three. So from the three possible trials, I choose two of them to be heads. The first and the second one, or the first and the third one, or the second and the third one. And that can be done in 
3 combination 2 ways times, since I have two of them chosen to be heads, that happens with probability of p squared, times 1 minus p to the power of 3 minus 2, which is 1. 3 minus 2. And again, this is choose one of the three, the first one, the second one, or the third one, to be heads, times p to the power of 1, times 1 minus p to the power of 3 minus 1. And finally, choose 0 of the 3, 3 combination 0, to be heads. So I have p to the power of 0 times 1 minus p to the power of 3 minus 0. Therefore, if x follows a binomial distribution with the number of trials n equals 3 and the probability of success p, the PMF px of little x is equal to 3 combination x times p to the power of x times 1 minus p to the power of 3 minus x for x equals to 0, 1, 2, or 3. And in general, if x follows a binomial distribution with number of trials n and probability of success p, the PMF is given by n choose x p to the power of x times 1 minus p to the power of n minus x and x could take values so the support of x is integers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all the way to n and in the second part of this lesson uh, we're gonna see that the expected value is equal to n times p that is the number of trials times the probability of success and the variance of the random variable x is going to be equal to n times p times 1 minus p and the MGF the moment generating function of x is going to be equal to 1 minus p times 1 minus p plus p times e to the power of t the whole thing to the power of n and that's what I'm going to do next in the second part of this lesson which is to prove that the expected value is n times p, the variance is n times p times 1 minus p, and the MGF is that. In fact, I'm going to start with the MGF, and then use the MGF technique to find the moments, the first moment and the second moment, and of course the variance.